So in this video, I'm going to be finding the equation of a straight line. So if I know, if I've got a picture of a straight line, or if I've got uh, two points, because two points will make up a straight line, uh, I can find the equation, y equals mx plus c. There's another, another version of that equation as well. Um, so I'm going to show you two methods here, but both methods start with the first step. If I don't know the gradient, I can't really find the equation of the line. So I need to find the gradient. Now you should remember the formula for finding the gradient, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, put in your points, so I'll do 9 minus 3 over 4 minus 2. That's going to give me 6 over 2, 3. Alright, so I now know that the gradient is equal to 3. Now with that piece of information, I can now find the equation of the straight line, and I can do it in two different ways. So I'm going to do it one way, and I'm going to do it the other way. So method one relies upon the fact that you know that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. And you know that this particular equation, this, this line that passes through those two points, has a gradient of 3. So it's going to be 3x plus c. But you also know that it passes through a point. It passes through a point 2, 3, and it passes through a point 4, 9. So if I put in one of those points, doesn't matter which one, I'm going to go with uh, 2, 3. Sub point 2, 3 into equation. So when I sub that point in, I'll get y equal to 3 equals m3, the x is 2, plus c. Now it's really straightforward from here. I'm just finding the c value because I know everything else. The c value is 3 minus 6 minus 3. The whole thing finishes with an equation that looks like y equals the gradient, which I know, and the c value, which I know. So two steps. Find the gradient, first of all. Sub in a point, any point, into y equals mx plus c. That'll let you find the c value, then write it. Now let's look at our uh, second method. Method 2 uh, relies upon a rearrangement of the gradient formula. So if I know that m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I can rewrite that as m x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1. Now, there's no trickery there. I've just rearranged the gradient formula. Now that I've done that, I can put in 3 for the gradient, because I know that. And I can put in one of these points as x2 and y2. It uh, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose this first point here. So x2 is going to be 2. Now x1, I'm not going to replace x1 with anyone, anything except for the letter x. I'm just going to let that be x, stay as it is. y2, 3. Minus and y1 is just y. So now I have 3 bracket 2 minus x bracket equals 3 minus y. I can expand this 6 minus 3x 3 minus y. I can rearrange this, move the negative y to this side to be positive y. Um, the negative 3x becomes positive 3x. 3 minus, so the 6 here will become negative 6. 3 minus 6 minus 3. Okay, you can see I've used two different methods to come to the answer. Now the last thing I'll say here is that sometimes you'll be asked to write it in this form, y equals 3x minus 3, but there is a second form you might get asked to write it in. You might get asked to write it in ax plus by plus c equals 0 form. So everything goes over on one side, and you're left with a zero on the, on the right-hand side. So that's very, very straightforward. If I'm going to rearrange this one to be in this form, y equals 3x minus 3. The 3x moves to the other side, becomes, uh, let's move everything over just a little bit, equals negative 3x. The y stays where it is, it's positive y, and the negative 3 moves over to this side and becomes positive 3 equals 0. So I've just shoved everything over one side, and there's my rearranged form there. 
Alright, that's finding the equation of a straight line in two different ways.